Here at Fishing Britain, we have heard that sometimes fly fishing can be seen as elitist or expensive to start. So today we're going to dispel some of those myths and show you how little you can spend to get out on a bankside and wet a line. Howell has come to Abba Tackle and Guns in Aberystwyth, West Wales to see Kevin and what deals he has on. To someone just starting out, any angling shop can seem quite a daunting place with an overwhelming amount of choice. But that's what the always cheerful and very helpful Kevs are here for. To ensure Howell gets the best deal, we've told him he has to pay for it himself. Hey Kev, challenge for me today is I've got to go and catch a trout on the cheapest, cheapest outfit you can kick me out with. A quick rummage through Kev's rods has revealed a fine specimen at pocket money prices. £7.50, it's a bargain. Then with a very thrifty reel, Hal picks the best value line. £10. <laughs> the reel's actually more expensive than the rod. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm loving this. Being a Cardi, which is a tight Welshman, this is working out quite well. With a box bursting with every fly from the sweet counter, let's see how much Howl has spent. Right, Kev. There's the full kit, rod, reel, line, flies. How much does it all come to? Normally it'd be around the £50 mark, but on, it's on sale today, so that would be £26. <laughs> that is, that right? is an absolute bargain. Flies, reel and line, and rod. But, will it catch fish? From the metropolis of Aberystwyth to the tranquil lakes here at Nine Oaks in Oakford, only 20 miles away, the owner, Bill Baker, tells us exactly what fishy treasure he stocks. Um, we have six lakes, three trout and three course. I've got some nice uh, carp, roach, tench, bream, chub, barbel, and grass carp. And not forgetting the trout, both rainbow and blue are in the lake we have chosen. So now we have all the gear, here's a quick guide on how to start. Right, we put the rod together and we've put the reel on. I'm putting it together just to make sure that the rings line up. Simple and easy. Now, one thing, and I have seen it happen before, sometimes there is a little ring down here. Now that's to hold your fly when you're walking from one spot to another. It's not to thread the line through. And then we've got the line. This is the white bit. In other forms of fishing, this is what they call the line. Be it nylon, be it fluorocarbon, or sometimes braid. Now that's really, really light and limp. And that's why they attach lead weights or big spinners or big bait at the end and then throw it out. Fly fishing, this is called the leader or the tippet material, which is attached to the line in the braided loop with just a very, very simple blood knot. But in fly fishing, this line is the actual weight. So we've got about the rod length of line out, and that's all I'm gonna do is just lay it on the water. And this is the hardest part about fly fishing is that you've gotta get a basic cast right before you go out fishing. Before you even start casting, protect the eyes. I'm gonna use the water tension just to drag the line up the rings, then lift it up so my hand is virtually opposite my ear and tap it forward. Here's a little secret for you, and this is how I teach kids. I go, pick up the phone. And people don't pick up the phone slowly, don't they? They go, hello, and this is it. You go, hello, push it back, there. Don't be in too much of a hurry to lift it off. If you lift it off too quickly, what it does, it creates a big disturbance. That scares all the fish away. So we lift slow, pick that phone up, and then push it out there. And when you can do that with ease, and it lands gently, you're now ready to go fishing. So let's tie a fly using a blood knot. First, pass the leader through the eye of the fly and turn the hook about seven or eight times and pass the tail back through the loop at the bottom, not through the eye of the fly. As you pull it tight, wet it with some spit and trim off the excess. Simple. Now, it is winter. It is cold. Even though the sun's shining, it is bitterly cold. We did have a frost overnight. It does mean that the fish are quite low down in the water. And the depth of this is about 12 foot on average. And you saw that bright headed fly. Well, that bead at the front is tungsten so it's very very heavy what you have to do 
in the winter is fish slow and fish deep. And then with fly fishing, as opposed to if you're going coarse fishing where you ground bait and you draw the fish to you, with fly fishing, you actually got to go and search out the fish. And then the other thing what we're trying to do is try and get that aggressive response from the fish. So I'm trying to move that fly so the long tail pulsates in the water, it looks attractive. Or the other thing is that it's something threatening. It's something coming into the fish's area. And he thinks, right, get out of my territory. And it, and it grabs the fly. So when I'm bringing it back in, you will see me lifting the rod really slowly and then just shaking the rod. That then imparts a movement into the fly under the water, but I'm just lifting it slowly and watching the end of the line to start with. Now, if you're a coarse fisherman, you think of the end of the line as if it was your float. Now, if that moves in the opposite direction, then obviously a fish is taken. You've got to tighten into him. And then you lift until you can see the fly coming up from the depth and I can just see that red bead. There's nothing behind it. So if there's nothing behind it, then you can roll cast it and then cast back out into the water. Even though Howell is quite upset about having to spend £26 on all the gear and £12 for four hours fishing, it's still a very cheap way to spend a day. Bill has kindly informed us that he actually hires gear at the fishery for £5 a day. Oops, sorry Hal. I'm sure Kev would do your part exchange on something. Just catching a fish would be nice to prove that it's not always about the expensive gear, but with the weather against us and the temperature and all the other excess. Oh, wait! <laughs> yes. Tell you what. Oh, there's no better feeling than actually getting a fish on the end of your line. Look at that. Come on, get in that net. That's our boy. We had faith. Oh. Never doubted you for a second. <clears throat> Now that's what I call a gorgeous rainbow. You forget what you can buy in the supermarket, get out on the bankside and catch your supper. <laughs>